Welcome to this week's episode of No Cover Music Magazine at American Guitar Boutique, 707 13th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama. Today we have the pleasure of having uh, Mr. Charles Tigner well, as our guest. Thank you very guest. much. It's good Appreciate to be here. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, Charles has been playing around town for... Quite some time, most of my adult life at yeah. least, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you can catch him downtown on Broadway uh, at Picasso's Pizza and uh, various locations around the state, but do not tell the police, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, they're not looking for me. Yeah, it wouldn't be, they wouldn't be too hard to find. For a little while. Wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, guitar playing, singing. I yeah, yeah, a little bit of piano little playing. Keyboards. You look a little piano playing. It's it's all smoke and mirrors. Then. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. All, it's all it's all goes. Yeah, it's all. I always like fake. to get right into music. Delicate. What's the, sure. What's the first? Well, the, the this first song I uh, I wrote, uh, it's it, it's uh, it's called uh, Mom went to see JC and all I got was this T-shirt, and. Uh, it, it came very quickly on the way home from Auburn one day. I was coming home and there's this huge thunderstorm, you know, this terrible, you know, menacing looking thunderstorm. And there was a rainbow coming through it, you know, it was just like a crazy thing. And I thought, well, that's a good hook for a song, you know. Awesome. And it just started rolling to me, coming to me. So I had stopped at the first place that I could get a uh, pen and paste paper. And I uh, jotted it down, and, you know, about 15 minutes it came out, which is only, you know, the only songs I've ever really kept are the ones that, that come out and are done real quick, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so that, that was this one. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take a listen to it. Hope you enjoy it. So hard to believe it happened that way. Sunday morning felt like any other day. When you came around, I caught a chill from your eye. Sit, sit down, son, I've got something to say. Been up all night trying to think of a way to tell you that I must be moving on. The doctor said, the Lord, he's calling me home. Pain's getting worse, it won't be long. To hear my words are all I have to give. Dead sun, sometimes a rainbow don't follow the rain. Sometimes you cry and it won't ease your pain. So keep your eyes wide open and free. When you feel like nothing else can go wrong, baby, just hear my words and may they keep you warm. So sometimes you find your rainbows in the storm. Wasn't too long before my was gone. Headed out to find the world on my own. Gonna turn a good boy to a fine man. Didn't know where I was gone, didn't know where to begin. Well, I'm full of bruises, baby, in the end. Those mama's words that kept me carrying on. Said sun, sometimes the rainbow don't follow the rain. Sometimes you cry and it won't ease your pain. Keep your eyes wide open and free. When it feels like nothing else can go wrong, baby, just hear my words and may they make you strong. Well, sometimes you find your rainbows in the storm. Sometimes you find your rainbows in the store. Oh, 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 oh. It's a great tune. Well, thank you, thank I you, like thank the you. lyrics. Thank you, thank you. It's uh, you know, it's mom's fine though. By the way, there's no, no mom's not dead in the uh, in the song. She's uh, she's she dies. But <laughs> like I said, it's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I bet uh, she was upset when she heard it. Well, she you know, went, what? I, yeah, she 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 was she was. I think she was confused about it to begin with. You know that uh, yeah that it we wasn't her I was talking something? about. You know yeah, and then uh, and then she's like, well, but yeah yeah she's uh, yeah. So let's talk about your songwriting process. 
It's not much of a process. Like I said, if I try to put anything to the process at all, I tend, tend to end up killing it, you know? It's, uh, but do you start with a, a lyric? Yeah, hook, start, start with a, yeah, either a hook or a lyric or an idea, you know, mm -hmm. a, a vibe, a feeling or whatever, and, uh, and then, then music would, would come, uh, if it doesn't come directly after that, it doesn't sort of make doesn't the cut. It <laughs> doesn't come at all. And, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, and then the music, you know, and, and uh, I'm a, having grown up, my, my father played as a kid, you know, and uh, I mean, always, he played in the church and everything, but he played everything in the key of C. So I guess somewhere ingrained in there, I, I'm drawn to A minor, you know, I mean, it's like A minor, is like, it's hard for me to get away from A minor. I pick up a guitar, that's what I immediately go to, or the piano as well, you know, it's my strong suit or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah. So that's like those that, moody things. Yeah, right. yeah, oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's so a relative got, minor C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got some other things. What's the next tune you want? To uh, play the next about? tune I'm playing is a, a song about uh, Sadie Whitlow, which is a, a made-up name of a uh, a woman uh, about a real woman that uh, when I was growing up in Seal, uh, Butch Anthony, who I, we wrote a, a bunch of these songs together uh, years ago. Uh, there's a woman that was a root-working woman. She'd mail roots all over the world, but uh, everybody down there was petrified of her. You know, they'd walk on the other side of the road and hold their breath and stuff once you come by. And uh, so th this is that's a song Some about kind of voodoo root. Sadie Whitlow, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's oh, that's cool. A voodoo worker. It's, ama it's, a, it's amazing what your imagination can do when you when you see oh, a man. situation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Into a song she was and, really scary looking. And she sometimes really, it has. She was to she do. was really creepy. You know, kind of creepy and uh, yeah, it could just like stare right through you. You know, type thing. But uh, I hope you enjoy. Oh, Sadie Whitlow, she did the best that she could. She didn't have no family except the ones that she carved from wood. People were scared, oh, Sadie and others, just let her be. A one round look from that woman, she'll turn you into a tree, yeah. Lord, she's been you all around, yeah. Oh, when she come out at night, no, she took you to the ground. Oh, Sadie Whitlow. The lady from Alabama, oh, Sadie Whitlow. Say an old Indian taught about the Roots and cores. They stay up all night walking in and walk about and stir. Mama said, Don't go near it. No, she, she put a spell on you. She poked pins in your eyes, Lord. She leave you standing black and blue, yeah. She make you do a voodoo dance. Lord, she'll spin you all around When she come out at night You know she took you to the ground Oh, Sadie Whitlow She's a lady from Alabama Oh, Sadie Whitlow Won't you stay away from Sadie, yeah Last time I went to see old said he said nobody came to the door Except the blue man she made from a big old sycamore She said 
said it made her crazy, you no, know, right down to her core. One night they rubbed together, you know, they burned up on the floor, oh yeah. She make you do a voodoo dance. Lord, she spin you all around. When old Sadie come out at night, she took you to the ground. Old Sadie Whitlow, a letter from Alabama. Old Sadie Whitlow, won't you stay away from Sadie? Old Sadie Whitlow, she's a letter from Alabama. Old Sadie Whitlow. So coming back, you say that uh, your dad played. He did. He did. He was did a you have piano music player in the house. Uh, I did growing up. I, uh, my dad played. Your dad played. Dad played. My both my sisters were like forced to take uh, harp and piano lessons uh, coming up, and then neither one of them really played much anymore. And I, I begged for piano lessons, and for one reason or another, I, I never uh, never got them. <laughs> Which I guess in, in hindsight is probably a blessing, you know. But I yeah. had to struggle for it a little bit. But yeah, I went to boarding school up in Virginia. And, same school my brother had previously gone. Who he was? He died before I was born. I never, never actually knew him. Only through his recordings of his band there in the same boarding school. Um, what was the, the name realms of, of his the band? realms of reason. Yeah. The realms of reason. It's like 1968, you know. And they were, uh, they were, uh, you know, they did Cream and uh, Jimi Hendrix and some uh, like. Uh, sh uh, You'll have to Jeff share Joplin some and stuff. You'll, You'll have like to share it. some yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got some of the real remastered. The bass player is actually uh, does a bunch of. Uh, producing a Frosty Horton up in Nashville, apparently. And uh, he uh, he remastered all these uh, original real real tapes and sent us a CD of it, so it's pretty neat. That's awesome. It's pretty neat. What a, yeah. what a great way to remember yeah, your brother. Yeah, yeah, well, and, like, somebody, get to know him, I, I suppose. Well, I felt like I always, you know, you know I grew up, and I had his guitars, and his, uh, his, you know, although I really didn't start playing in earnest with the guitar until I was probably 15 or 16, you know, um, but I, I always wanted to, you know, <laughs> and I tried or whatever. But uh, yeah, listen, this real drill is really what made me want to play music. You know, I was like, man, this is what I want to do. If he can do it, I can do it. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, what's the next one you want to do for us? Uh, the next one is uh, a song called uh, called uh, Virginia. She's a creeper. <laughs> and uh, it's a kind of a play on words between, uh, you know, Virginia creeper is kind of an invasive vine that, you know, comes in with ivy and all that stuff around here. And uh, you know, they, it's all about revenge and, and infidelity and uh, satisfaction and uh, gar happy up gardening, and gardening, and uh, yeah, neighbors and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. All right. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Played me a game, you know I set a little trap. In the morning I went to check it, and I done caught her on his lap. The gal sure is pretty, just hanging there in the bright sunshine. Say Virginia was a creeper, but now, now she just a lie. Me and my neighbor, we can see her every day. Virginia's hanging on our fence, and I think she's there to stay. The bees have their honey, but the smell of revenge is mine. Cause Virginia was a creeper, but now, now she just divine.
That was way back in 1963 When she left beyond this day and Every year, every year at the same time Well, I thank her and I pray, yeah When the sheriff asked me about it I just give him the same old line I say Virginia was a creeper But now, now she just divine oh, oh. Now she just divine What, uh, what what age were you when you started playing guitar? Um, you know, I, I was picking around with my brothers all my life, but I never really had any type of direction or guidance to it. You know, it was, it was rather frustrating. But uh, when I was in, when I went to boarding school, I guess I was 16, and uh, what got up there, there was a guy down the hall from me had a nice little SG, you know, and he was always just killing it, you know. And my friend Paul Teller, and he he said, "Hey, man," I said, "I always really wanted to learn to play guitar," you know, and he says, "Well, I'll show you what I know. You know I'll show you a few chords." And uh, that was it. Butch, uh, Anthony had come across some uh, old Telestar freaking guitar with the action about this high off of the neck, and he gave it to me. And uh, yeah, I had some strings put on it and had, you know, took it up to uh, the boarding school up there. And within like two months, we had a band going on because I, I, they needed a singer more than they needed a guitar player, but I'd play a little guitar and I'd sing. And then we had a band called Syzygy. <laughs> Syzygy? Syzygy, S Y Z Y G Y. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and the then, creative days. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It did stuff like uh, some Huda Gurus and some uh, uh, REM and you know, that kind of stuff. It was like 80, 88, 89, yeah. you know, so it was that, that kind of period of things. That's cool. And, uh, and then we had one called Us and Them, and, uh, which uh, would, included the, uh, my calculus professor, who was just brilliant. He had stayed on, he lived on the streets of Paris in the 60s and just made his way around. You know, he said, if we made enough for a room of, Crisp of bread and a, and, a, and a bucket of wine every day. He was fine, you know. Yeah. Had an old guild, and he was, he's amazing. Uh, Tom Grant. He's he's still out there picking and playing, and just really, really good. He taught me a lot. A lot of, a lot what of uh, what what might you say to to young musicians coming up about being able to, you know, focus or follow the dream or whatever Man, you could tell somebody you know, about how uh, you've been able to keep your if, life. In if music? I could, if I could go back and tell my younger self anything music related, I would say. Go ahead and save up the money and get a decent guitar. <laughs> you know, I mean, don't go and just go yeah, after crappy guitar, after crappy after guitar. You know, because I just kept trading up right? between Philip Quinn and Larry Rose over at Coleani's back, yep. uh, back in the day. I just, uh, you know, I mean, I went through a lot of crappy guitars. You're all right to say Cole. And all right, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, we well, don't mind. They're not in existence anymore. We're I all guess. part of the big scene. Sure, so. sure. So yeah. So yeah, that was you know I went through. I, 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 I'd like to think that I'd be a much more accomplished player by now. I'd be much further along in my playing had I. Just gone out and saved up and got a Martin to begin with. Or I just, do tell people you know, buy the best thing you can afford. That's right. That's right. And then you know, and something good you can get your money back out of better, easier than you can something that's. You know, hopefully yeah. you won't because you'll hopefully keep you won't. It. Hopefully you keep playing it. But yeah, it's it really uh, that that's really the only thing. But who, who the hell we can't go back. <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> cool. I don't so know if I change anything because uh, you know. Do you knows? think growing up in Alabama had a influence? Growing oh absolutely 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 I call it yeah a lot of it we call it swamp rock you know yeah. the stuff with Oil Mellon Creek especially the full band and that yeah I grew up right on the edge of a swamp and it was uh, yeah and uh, just the community down there you know every Friday night at the possum right down there dad would be playing uh, uh, Rick Edwards and uh, Henry Parker would come down and play and it, you know it was, it was around a lot of a lot of party scene and music growing up so yeah, yeah it helped it helped quite a bit that's cool quite a bit. Well, what's this last tune that you're going to play for us? Um, the last one is uh, is a song about cheap wine in Pittsview, Alabama. Ah, and uh, mom, comes full circle. Yes, and mom, <laughs> mom is a Pitts from Pittsview, and the uh, uh, record that uh, Butch and I did, 
uh, the tidal track looks like something's in the water, but th this is a, uh, it's, it's about the pitch of your area, you know, because it's really, there's something, more. I've got the same pitch blood in me as my cousins down there that grew up in pitch you, but they were drinking the water down there and there's something incredibly different about the, by, about them, you know, especially, and a great thing, it's not a, not a bad thing, but they're, they're just, People say the same thing about Muscle Shoals. Right, right. I just tuned a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I didn't, but this is a song about cheap wine in Pittsfield, Alabama. So. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of No Cover Music Magazine with Charles Tigner. We're happy to have him on here. Enjoy this last thank tune. Thank you, thank you. And we'll see you next week. like a good book But it's of little use to those who can read Something's in your water, mister They got to have it They do plead Well, they got to have it Well, they got to have it Let me hear your damn soul Make you see so clear. Yeah. The sun's in the water, sun's in the water, sun's in the water, something's in the water, sun's in the water, something's in the water, there's something's in the water, something's in the water around here. Make you see, you make you see, you make you see so clear. Oh yeah, yeah.